Hey, did you know this video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends? That's right, baby, you know them and love them. The completely free-to-play RPG with millions of players and 80 million downloads. Focus on getting your starter champ to level 60 as soon as possible. If you have a really strong champion, they can help carry you through the campaign and dungeons and help level up the other champions in your team. Yeah, that Raid Shadow Legends. New players can enjoy a special Valentine's Day-themed adventure with the Raid Love Quest going on from February 14th to March 14th. Head to raidlovequest.plarium.com, then enter your player ID. Join for a chance to win some fantastic in-game and real-life prizes, like Valentine's Day-themed Raid Champions and even some Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. But I'm not done yet! Click that link down below to download Raid Shadow Legends and you'll receive a free Champion Jotun, 100k Silver, 50 Gems, and 2 Epic Skill Tomes. And if you search up Card of the Waffle, you can join my clan. Act quickly! I really love Nintendo. You know, if that already wasn't super obvious. I grew up with consoles like the Super Nintendo and the N64. Me and my friends would spend hours on the GameCube, and my family would all spend quality time together playing Wii Sports. In short, Nintendo has played a huge part in my life, and many others as well. But behind every beloved product is a sleazy knockoff waiting to find and jump at its prey. In this case, I'm of course talking about bootleg video game consoles. Consoles that just make you think, why? Accompanied with a little tear running down your face. So, join me today as we hesitantly check out some bootlegged Nintendo consoles. So our first piece of electronic garbage we're going to check out is the Nintendo Poly Station. Believe it or not, this actually isn't an official Nintendo product. Shocking, I know. Due to copyright infringement, the Nintendo part of the console's name was eventually removed, now just simply titled Poly Station. The name in the console very obviously resembles a PS1, with its slogan, It's just not a game anymore. You know what? I have a feeling you may be right about that. But hey, the real big selling point is the fact that this console has a million games in one built into it. Yeah, a million. That is the most absurd number of games I've heard in a plug-and-play console. I guess let's see for ourselves. Oh my god. There really are a million games in this thing. Let's play some. Okay. This is just Super Mario Brothers. Let's try another one. This is, uh... This is Contra. Okay, how about this one? This is just Mario again. This one? Double Dragon? Now Blaster Master? Now Mega Man? I'm beginning to lose faith here. This one sounds unique. Li Ma Xinjiang. Yeah. No. Okay. No. Yeah. It's Mario again. So what we have here is essentially a big emulator of NES and Famicom games. Oh sure, there are technically a million of them, but the amount of clones definitely makes that number seem not that impressive. I mean, look at this game. Pikachu. It's a Mario 1 ROM hack with Pikachu instead of Mario. Sure, it's aesthetically different, but it's still Mario! The console was fairly popular in China. Go figure. The land of the bootleg loved this thing. You know what? These things are probably better for baseball practice. Oh. Up next is the Zone 60. Remember the Wii? Well, the people who made this atrocity sure do, because they really tried their hardest to rip it off, utilizing barely any motion controls, but still having the controllers resemble the Wiimote. First up, we have Tennis. And it's impossible. What a surprise. The motion controls barely work. Maybe boxing will go better. Okay, so this one's a little more responsive, but who am I fighting? This literally looks like a baby. I'm- I'm punching a baby. My dreams have finally come true. Now we have a dancing game. It's just like Guitar Hero, but occasionally you need to swing the remote around for some reason. Also, the creepy baby is back. Hey, where are those boxing gloves at? I just gotta, just gotta take care of something really quick. Then we got darts. Literally darts. It's bad. And those were all of the motion control games. All four of them. The remaining 56 games are all just terrible ripoffs of more well-known games. For example, here's Mario Kart with only one racer, no items, 
and the same racetrack repeating itself over and over with no discernible characteristics. Don't you hate it how in Mario Kart, stages look unique and at every turn has something new visually to look at? Me too! I prefer if things looked exactly the same all the time. Then we got Candy Crush or something. This game is literally Burger Time, that classic arcade game. Braveheart! Those birds that you rescue at the end of Sonic the Hedgehog are super upset with you for some reason and want you dead! The goal of the game is to get under them and jump, similar to the Mario arcade game. Ball Blaster! Now, I'm not too sure what we're gonna be seeing here, so kids, cover your eyes. And it's just another stupid puzzle game. Although, I will give it a pass because of this adorable creature. Crazy Coconuts! You're playing basketball in the jungle, while totally not Alvin and the Chipmunks watch and laugh at you. Watch out! Cause here we come! It's been a while, but we're back with style, so Magic Cubes! It's literally just Tetris! Whenever there's a game compilation like this and they have to resort to Tetris, you know they ran out of ideas. It's just as lazy as adding in Pong. And that's exactly what the Zone 60 is, a lazy, rip-off excuse of a console. There's obviously more games that I didn't talk about, but you essentially get the gist of what they're going to be like. Such as... Mr. Onion! who sure looks a lot like Pac-Man, and his possible girlfriend, who sure looks a lot like Kirby. Let's give it a go. Mmm, mm-hmm, yep, yep, I'm, I'm burning this thing. Oh boy, see what I did there? Here's something new that I could have gone my entire life without seeing. The Game Child Handheld System. I'm just gonna keep this baseball bat warm over here. You know, just in case. So, obviously the Game Child is a huge knockoff of the Game Boy, an actually successful handheld console. But where the Game Child truly... shines, is that it doesn't have exchangeable game cartridges. Instead, it has two whole games built inside of it. Two. At least that means this will be quick. First up is... Well, go figure. It's Tetris. Remember what I said earlier? Whenever there's a game compilation like this and they have to resort to Tetris, you know they ran out of ideas. Yeah, that. This just helps prove my point. And the second game is... I think... a Mario Game & Watch game. Yeah, toads are being shot out of the cannon because... Well, I have no idea. And Koopas are being thrown out of an airship for some reason. And that was the Game Child. See? It was quick and mostly painless. The origin of the Game Child, though, is pretty interesting, because it made its debut in an episode of The Amazing World of Gumball. You got me a game! Child? Made in Chainor? This is such a knockoff, even the country it was made in is a knockoff. Now that is truly amazing. Bringing a fictional bootleg product to life makes me oddly happy. JRPG titles never make sense. They're just random words thrown together. Okay, here's the last one that I can physically put my body through. It's called the Chintendo V. Now I'm gonna repeat that because you're probably thinking, No, I didn't just hear that. There's no way that's what they called it. But alas. The Nintendo V is very real. Released in China in 2007, oh, what a surprise. It was a Nintendo Wii clone. Everything from the name, all the way down to its design and logo. I will admit, China always delivers on their near copy but different enough to not get sued design. And look how much fun everyone's having! Going by these commercials, it doesn't look too different from the Wii itself. Plus, I'm sure the Nintendo V was also way cheaper, so it's not too surprising that the console did well. But enough of that! Let's check out the games themselves! Sport V! Oh, God. Oh, God! Now, try not to be too frightened by these lovely creatures, because they're actually the V's mascots. So let's try out some Sport V. Our first sport game is... Fry Egg. 
It sounds like a cooking game where we just need to... Dang it. So the objective... Uh, dang it! I, I'm actually getting pretty upset. Why is cracking this egg seemingly the hardest thing in the world for me to do? Once I actually manage to crack it, our friend here shows up again and does that. Then we're cooking. Oh, I guess this isn't too bad. Up next is Come On! A very vague title that can mean literally anything. In this particular case, it means throwing fish at derpy looking Charmanders. Why? Game over? I thought I was doing pretty good. Uh, whatever. Bird night. Oh, you look absolutely terrifying. I like your shoes, though. We take control of Barrio, floating around with balloons. We need to defeat the enemies, collect coins, and keep our balloons intact. It's actually pretty good, to be honest. Fantasy baseball. Let me just say right off the bat... <laughs> Let me just say this really quick. There's... Nothing fantasy about this baseball game. But I will say that, again, the game is actually pretty functional. It's responsive, it has some nice animations. Good job! Lucky dice. The dice rolls and... And, uh... Nothing, apparently. Happy Tennis! Why oh why does he look so dead inside? This game is also... fine. Bowling! Well, at least this one is simply titled Bowling. Hey, wanna hear a hot new take? The game is... fine. That's all I can really say. They're not too broken or weird enough to really make fun of. The game is just Diet Wii Sports. And just like with Diet Soda, I don't want it. If I can't have the real legit thing, I don't want it. I would rather have nothing than a cheap imitation. You know what? I'm just gonna blow off some steam and play my Super Chintendo or my Chintendo 74. Maybe I'll get my friends together and we can play the Chintendo Game Sphere. And ooh, who could forget? Who needs the Nintendo Switch? I have the Nintendo Bit. Thanks for watching my channel, Conroy the French Toast. I love French toast. I remember when the NES Classic was first announced. I was like, whoa, a mini NES that has 30 games in one? What a bargain! It was so charming that day one, I rushed to my local GameStop and... Oh, they were all sold out. And they had no idea when another shipment was going to come in. Well, fantastic. So my only options were to wait or go on eBay and spend a ridiculous amount of money from scalpers. But little did we know that there was actually a third option. The Mini Game Anniversary Edition. The what? 620 games in one? Oh my. That's right. What we have here is a bootleg NES classic. And you bet your sweet, sweet bottom, we're gonna check it out. So the actual official name of this console is the Minigame Anniversary Edition. The Anniversary Edition of what exactly? The NES, probably. The console's physical design, however, makes it pretty clear what this wants to be. They didn't even try! The console, the controllers, the only alteration is that the word Nintendo has been removed. So let's boot this puppy up! <laughs> You know that picture with the dog sitting in a house that's on fire saying, This is fine. That's pretty much me right now. So right off the bat, we're presented with classic titles like Contra Fork, Contra 7, and Mario 6. Clearly bootleg games, some of which I've actually already talked about on this channel. Letting us know right away that if literally half of the games listed on the first page are bootlegs, definitely expect to see more. Titles like Poke Tetris. Poke what? Oh, Pikachu, what happened to you? You don't have to fake that smile. So as the title suggests, the game is simply Tetris. Yeah, just Tetris. Despite there already being four different versions of Tetris on this thing, they for some reason wanted to add a fifth. However, this game has something that all of the other versions lack. A cute Pikachu watching and cheering you on. And honestly, what more does a person need in their life? Spider-Man 2! Oh, so is this that Spider-Man game that everyone's been talking about? I can't wait to play this! 
These are some sick graphics. The city is at risk, and only you can save it. Let's do this! Okay, first off, this is not a city. It's more of a village. Secondly, something about this perspective is really hurting my eyes. The trees in the foreground scroll and follow me, but the ones in the background stay still. It kind of makes me want to vomit. And thirdly, this is just Ninja Gaiden 3. Like, literally. Just swapped with Spider-Man. Which I guess is a good game to make a Spider-Man ROM hack of, considering Ryu flips around when he jumps and sticks to walls. So, by default, I guess the game is pretty good. So while this thing is definitely loaded with bootlegs and ROM hacks, it definitely has a lot of fun official NES games. Sure, we have the classics like Super Mario Bros, Mega Man, The Legend of Zelda, and Balloon Fight just to name a few. But it also has more underrated NES games that don't get as much praise as they should, such as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Tag Team Wrestling, and Twinbee, just to name a few. One of my favorite underrated NES games that makes an appearance on this console would have to be... Mappy Land! Mappy Land is a really simple and cute platformer. You take control of this adorable mouse and need to collect cheese, all while avoiding miscellaneous enemies. It's honestly really basic, but I find a certain charm in it that I can't really explain. The NES gave birth to so many cute characters. It's the same reason I enjoy Kirby on the NES. It's not really the most engaging or stimulating game out there, but the cute characters, cute enemies, fun stages, and color palettes adds a certain layer of enjoyment. If there is one thing that the NES had plenty of back in the day, it was really solid and enjoyable side-scrollers and platformers. However, since the NES had over 700 games released throughout its lifespan, many of them were forgotten about, or never even saw the light of day outside of Japan. Like? Jumpin' Kid! Hey, what are you looking at? You got a problem? Cause we can take this outside! The game is a really solid action-adventure, side-scroller, platformer... That's a lot of titles. But what I really like about this game is that it's based off of the story, Jack and the Beanstalk. Meaning, every stage takes place either ascending the beanstalk or in the sky in some way. This gives the game a real sense of a world, constantly ascending this big beanstalk and adventuring around it. Showing you that, wow, this thing is really big. Level 1 is the only stage that takes place on the ground for obvious reasons. The rest of the game has you in the sky, and the final stage has you in the giant's dungeon, I guess. Full of ghosts, crabs, and money bags. Maybe Japan's version is a little different. And you remember how the story ends, right? Jack defeats the giant by shooting him with his magic, and a green-haired anime girl descends from the heavens and falls in love with Jack. I mean, sure, I'll take it. So there are clearly some really fun titles in this thing, whether official, bootleg, or underrated. But don't be fooled, because for every good game on the minigame anniversary edition, there are 10 crappy ones. Like this one. It just doesn't work. It does this literally every time. Or this game. After the title screen, it crashes. Fine, I didn't want to play you anyway. Unfortunately for us, though, not every crappy game crashes. So here's a bunch that didn't. This game is called Door Door. It's a game about what else? Doors. You take control of this cute little snowball and need to escape the other cute creatures coming your way. Hey, maybe they just want to hug. Why are we running away from that? The main objective of the game is to have these enemies chase you while you open up doors and trap them in them. It's kind of like a reverse Hotel Mario. Yeah, lots of doors and ascending and descending. And if I ever need to make that comparison, you've already made a mistake. Police Dog Lassie. Aww, cute pupper alert! We've got a cute pupper over here! <laughs> Can I help you? So there's this green diddler over here who's burying a bunch of crap. But most importantly, diamonds. However, they only get shown for a split second, so you need to memorize where exactly the diamonds were buried. When you take control of the pupper, you need to go to the exact location and dig them up. However, I don't have the attention span for this game. I'm honestly like, okay, that's where the diamond is. Don't forget, don't forget. Hey, what's that? Oh, 
Dang it! Where was the diamond? Fruit gift! I got a strawberry here. Which one of these silhouette fruits is the strawberry? Ooh, it's gotta be this one! That's a cherry. That's a pineapple. That's the game. Rabbit village. Now, I'm not one to judge, but this has got to be the ugliest rabbit I've ever seen. It looks like a mix between Bugs Bunny and the Noid. Ugh. So here we take control of an adorable rabbit using a fun mechanism to save other rabbits from their burning homes. What? Fire is bad, Meatwad. You shouldn't play with it. Oh, I know, I know. So Rabbit Village is on fire, and we need to save everyone. That's a good incentive. Do you really want to see these cute rabbits get burned alive? I don't. But these creepy little munch creatures sure do. Like, look at this guy. Dropping bombs on me for trying to save rabbits? Who pissed in your Cheerios? My English teacher said that to me one time, and I had no idea what she meant by that. And it's just kind of stuck with me. Lawn mower. I think it... I don't think we're legally allowed to be upset. We see a game titled Lawnmower and selected it. What were we expecting? This is a game about mowing the lawn. I detest mowing the lawn. You cut grass and collect gas cans so you don't run out of fuel because this lawnmower is apparently jet powered. I really do hate mowing the lawn though. Ugh, okay. One more game I think is all I can handle. Simply titled, Egg Contest. You know I've always wanted to play as an egg, so I'm pretty excited for this game. So it looks like all we really have to do is collect stars and dance. Yeah, I'm down with that. Every time you collect a star, you get this fireworks display of how many you have left. I really like the- wait, this kinda looks familiar. Is that- it is! Those are the same firework effects from Super Mario World! Egg Boy, are you a thief? I looked up to you and your people! All in all though, the game is pretty fine. The mini game Anniversary Edition is a really interesting product. On one hand, yeah, it is a bootlegged console full of games that they definitely don't own the rights to. But on the other hand, I wanted an NES classic! Nintendo made like 20 of them, and they all sold out in 10 seconds. So my only choices were to go on eBay and spend an unnecessary amount of money on one from a scalper, or wait 9 million months until they released more of them, by which point I would have lost interest in wanting one anyway. You can Google Minigame Anniversary Edition and still find them at reputable stores for half of the price of an NES Mini, and with literally 20 times the games. Now, I'm not here promoting bootlegs or anything, but in this particular situation, Nintendo kinda had it coming to them. But whatever, at the end of the day, this was still a really interesting piece of gaming hardware. The Nintendo Switch is a good console. It never hurt anyone. It's only been a good boy. So please, tell me why. Why? Why the Nanaka Smitch is a thing? I don't remember seeing this in the direct. Yes, my sweet little wafflings. What we have here is a bootleg Nintendo Switch made in... Ooh, what's it gonna be, baby? My money's on Russia! <laughs> Colombia. Well, that's definitely a new one. They got coke there, right? It's all starting to make sense now. Now, I wish I could sit here and say, I can't believe this thing is real. But unfortunately, in this day and age, I can 200% believe that this thing exists. So, uh, where do we begin? With the design? It's clearly a Switch knockoff with cheap hollow Joy-Cons that feel like you can crush them with just a little bit of pressure. The screen is also tiny. It's just a box. Unlike the Switch that has a long screen, the Smitch feels like you took a normal Switch and cut it in half, making it technically more portable than the real Switch. But then you have to live with the fact that you're the dork traveling with a Nanaka Smitch, TM. And the Joy-Cons are actually detachable. And it works? Man, these bootleggers are getting more and more advanced, I'll give them that. Now, I'm not gonna link you to where you can buy one of these, because that's probably illegal, but I will show you the advertisement picture they used. BAM! New Innovamos! 
I don't know what that means, but according to Google Translate, it means new and innovative. Excuse you? Now this thing sounds pretty cool. I mean, it's got consola rechargeable and 800 Wegos Instalados. I mean, come on, those are pretty tasty. I love Instalados. Surprisingly enough as well, the console does come with RCA cables, meaning you can hook this piece of garbage up to your TV. I never would have expected that. The Nanaka Smitch is more of a Switch than the Switch Lite. Think about that for a second. But of course, the big selling point for this console are the 800 games it comes with. So enough flip-flapping around. Let's see what the Nanaka Smitch truly has to offer. So here's the thing with 800 games. No, you don't need 800 games at once, at any time, for any reason. Because at best, your reaction will always be... Oh, okay. NES games! NES games everywhere! I mean, come on, how many times have we looked at a multi-cart or some bootleg plug-and-play console, and it was just littered with random NES games? I mean, what you'd expect is on here. Here's Super Mario Bros. Can't have a bootleg console without it. Ooh, is that Zelda? Daring today, aren't we? Double Dragon, Kirby, Adventures of Lolo. I'm more angry than I am surprised at this point when it comes to bootlegs. I'm in an abusive relationship with them. I know it's going to be a terrible time, but I keep coming back. However, there are always a few hidden gems on these bootlegs. If those gems were made out of horse crap. First game is... Uh... Dr. Mario and Pterodactyl. My favorite duo. Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. Dr. Mary 2! First off, I have no idea where Dr. Mary 1 is. And secondly, why the heck is this on my Smitch? I mean, what is this? Is it literally just gonna be Dr. Mario? It is. It's Dr. Mario. Or excuse me, Dr. Mary. Whatever, I don't know what you want me to say. Dr. Mario is always a fun, relaxing, puzzle-solving experience. But... What about the pterodactyl game? What's your deal? I'm sorry, you look sad. I didn't mean to yell. Okay, so I know I said I wasn't going to yell, but I absolutely lied! What is this? I'll tell you what this is. It's a reskinned Dr. Mario, but with a concept I'm not 100% on. In Dr. Mario, you're throwing pills to kill viruses. Simple enough. But here, you're puking out rhombuses into a tree to kill squid. The less we know, the better. Lion King! Why is The Lion King one of the most bootleggable game series I've seen? We got Simba up here looking like, duh, with random vehicles flying by and a title screen that is driving my OCD crazy. All right, so we got Simba up here munching away. That's a good start. The game is a 2D side-scroller, and a pretty good one at that if we're being honest. I'm sure that's because this is actually a reskin of some NES game out there, but whatever, I'll take what I can get. The soundtrack also slaps hard, as the kids say. The game itself is also pretty hard. This ice level, for example, where you never stop sliding is unnecessary. Simba doesn't care, however. He never cares. When you get a game over, he's just sitting up there like, Yep, I guess the game's over. I don't care. Mario Fi- What? Mario Fighter 3, the World Warrior. They probably mean World Warrior, but that's not what that says. Also, Yellow Granddad is here. What we have here is a 2D fighting game starring Street Fighter characters and Mario. <laughs> Mario looks so out of place compared to Ryu, and I don't even know how his moves work. 
He's super choppy and floaty. Like, look at this. Look at this move and explain it to me. Did he learn that attack from his Paper Mario ancestors? My strength is much greater than yours. Well, jeez, Mario, no need to be a jerk about it. Here we are beating up Guile in the bootleg Mushroom Kingdom. I don't even know what video games are anymore. So out of curiosity, I decided to beat the story mode and see what would happen. I beat the crap out of Vega, you know, famous Street Fighter character Vega. A man who comes from Taiwan had fiery crimson skin. His name was Mario. He created a sensation in American wrestling domain. Mario has exercised many kinds of stunts. What is this lore we're creating? At least we now know who to thank for this game. Thank you, Mr. or Mrs. XXXXX. Oh my goodness gracious, another one? Super The Lion King 2 and that music. That's the music from Donkey Kong Country! Don't drag that game into this mess! This is all starting to make a lot of sense now. So we have a butchered 8-bit version of Minecart... Uh, madness from Donkey Kong Country. The controls are super awkward and stiff. It literally took me 20 minutes to get used to them and beat the first level. I'm not proud of myself. Level 2 is more Donkey Kong Country nonsense, and my childhood feels violated. Donkey Kong Country was one of my absolute favorite games of all time when I was a kid. I have nothing but fond memories of it. And here, it just looks like they threw the game into a blender, puked in said blender, mixed it up, and this is the result. Ugly graphics, broken controls, music that sounds like it's given up. Level 3 is a boss battle with a mustachioed Neki. Again, it's kinda difficult since the controls are the big awful. So I kill Neki and... That's... the end? Three levels? We... did it? Yeah, boy! 800 games, man. I can't sift through all of that just to find one that's maybe good. Wait, what's this? Oh my goodness! Communist Mario 3! This is actually a dream come true! Look at Mario in his little Russian coat and hat, traveling the icy landscapes that is Soviet Russia. Now it's kinda hard to tell at first, but the game is actually just a one-to-one -one recreation of Super Mario Bros. 3. But with one major difference! Normally in Mario games, collecting coins is good. Get enough and you'll receive a 1-up. But here, since we're now in communist Russia, collecting coins hurts you! And since the game is laid out like Super Mario Bros. 3, there are a lot of coins in very convenient places that you now have to avoid. Yibinyamat! Let's check out the Toad House. The state's goods are free, but the price you pay is waiting in line for nine hours. Listen, man, I'm not here to get political. I just want to hear the song! Thank you! It honestly feels like this game was made for me. The game is really creative and super fun, but I will not say that it's the best game, because here, all games are equal. So that was the Colombian Namaka Smitch. It doesn't even sound like I'm saying words. It sucked, obviously. It has no reason to exist. But hopefully, it will go down in history as one of the most bootlegged bootlegs to ever bootleg. Maybe I just need to become a bootleg myself, you know? Just fully embrace it. So, this isn't a console for me, but it is one for Conroy the French Toast.
Wish.com is an online retail store where you can buy all kinds of products at a super cheap price. On paper, that sounds fantastic, getting really cool products at a cheap price. But that's only just a tiny fraction of what Wish is all about, because a majority of the site, like 98.7% of it, has to be cursed. I mean, it's just gotta be. It had to be built on some kind of Indian internet burial ground. I mean, what the heck is this? What use does this have to anyone? These products can't be real. We've all seen a weird Wish ad while scrolling through social media, just minding our own business on Twitter or something, and then BAM! This! All this in your face! <laughs> How does this help your cat? What benefit does it offer physically or emotionally? But out of all of these Wish products, nothing has made me more confused and concerned than this. The built-in, uh, th there's already a typo. Blew it in 3000 classic games TV game HDMI TV video game console for NES game retro TV game box. That's a fantastic name, really. I couldn't think of anything better myself. Except for maybe stupid bootleg ripoff garbage Nintendo Xbox bootleg TV game dumb face. That would have worked too. This is one of those pictures that the longer you look at it, the more painful it becomes. What we have here is seemingly an Xbox One being controlled by a PlayStation 2 controller coming bundled with that famous Xbox franchise, Super Mario 3D World, as well as apparently 2,999 other games. But honestly, I don't care about those games. Super Mario 3D World is all you need, and I'm only kind of kidding. That game is so good and deserves so much more love. I will give this thing credit though, the ad has a lot of pictures pictures and specs about the console. They are not afraid to show this thing off. Not sure if that's a good thing. For example, the PS2 controller buttons are labeled by letters as opposed to shapes. I guess this is to prevent Sony from suing them. And good luck with that. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Are you telling me that this thing was originally $888? And for some magical reason, it's now on sale for $68. I'm sure this thing was never $800, and only showed that so when unsuspecting parents and grandparents come across this thing, they'll say, Oh wow, little Jimmy loves video games, and this expensive game box is on sale. It must be great! R.I.P. to any kid who received this as a gift, which apparently there's a lot of. Just check out the reviews for this Xbox Station 3D World. My son loves the game and it arrived early, but one of the controllers was broken. Came early, my grandson loves it. My seven-year-old son loves this. Me gusto mucho mis niños bien felices. Apart from that last one, it sounds like a lot of unfortunate kids got this for Christmas or their birthdays. I'm so, so sorry. All right, let's buy it. We just gotta wait for it to ship in from... China? Alright, so I'm not gonna lie, the idea of playing Super Mario 3D World on my Xbox with PlayStation controllers really did pique my interest. Super Mario 3D World is criminally underrated, it's one of my favorite Mario games of all time. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So we turn this thing on, and... Someone please save me. What accursed wish hex have I brought upon myself? So this is a thing. A bootleg thing. Street Fighter, Mario, Castlevania, Sonic, and Contra. So, as it turns out, the Xbox Station 3D World is actually a multi-console emulator. Which is pretty impressive, I will admit. Most of these bootleg consoles only have one emulator in them. So, seeing five consoles in one is pretty impressive. In the same way that the world's largest burger is impressive. You have my attention! but I'm also horrified at the sight of it. So this is the main menu where you select what console you want to play. Once you make your selection, you're taken to this boring blue selection menu. It feels like I'm messing around with an old Windows 95 PC, not a modern day cutting edge video game console that apparently costs $888. You got the name of the game on the left, followed by its extension file, like .gba for Game Boy Advance games, and the box art on the right. The box art can sometimes be a little funny, especially for the bootlegs, like Super Mario World 9. That's... an attempt, I'll give you that. 
The quality of the games are what you'd expect. Trash. They're extremely choppy and sound like this! So it's best to play these games with the volume off. And the TV off. And while you're at it, just turn the console off as well. This console advertised 3,000 games and, from what I can tell, they deliver. As long as you don't mind playing Sonic 2 like 300 different times. Yeah, to reach 3,000 games, they just put the same games in here but under different titles. So it doesn't really count. So, if you really want to play NES, SNES, Genesis, GBA, and Neo Geo games at a considerably degraded rate in both the visual and audio department, then be my guest. They're really de- Wait, 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 wait just a gosh darn minute! You notice something missing here? Something like a Wii U section so I could play Super Mario 3D World? I bought this thing specifically for Mario 3D World! That and the Xbox PlayStation hybrid was funny, but still, I was bamboozled! This is my angry face! Why do I have it? Well, thanks for asking! Because today, we're going back to Wish.com. Oh boy, you'd think one trip was enough. We came, saw a terrible console, played it, and had a terrible time. But as it turns out, Wish is some kind of nightmare farm that specializes in raising the crop known as bootlegs. There's just so many of them. Does nobody at the Wish headquarters think they should put a stop to at least some of this? Yeah, probably not. Because why would they? If they can trick some poor old grandma into thinking this is a PS4 so they can make a quick 20 bucks, then that's great for everyone. Except the kid. Sorry, little Jimmy. Aw, man! What the f***? So, let's check out the 2020 new upgrade 4.3 slash 5.1 inch hand- <laughs> Alright, 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 alright! Hold on a second! Can we please- Please, just give these things some kind of name. It doesn't even have to be good. Wish.com. We don't care. Wow. Let's just take a second to fully appreciate this image. Free 30,000 games. You know, after you pay for the console. But yeah, after you pay for it, it's all free. Where do we start with this? Seriously, what's the best strategy of attack for something like this? It's design? I guess it's a weird Nintendo Switch PS Vita hybrid. Who would ever want to be associated with the Vita? Even Sony probably feels embarrassed for making it. Now let's be completely honest. Do we, deep down in our hearts, truly think that we can play Mario Maker 2 and Smash Bros Ultimate on this thing? No. Bold statement, I know. 128 bits? Holy crap! That's like the power of 8 Super Nintendos! Is that impressive? I don't know. Now, despite advertising itself as a handheld console, you can actually plug this thing into the TV, so you can have a bigger experience of pain. It's my favorite. Now, this thing may look like a big piece of trash, and it is, but at least it's only $20. So, I can either buy this console, or 5 boxes of Ziploc sandwich bags. Every box has 90 bags, so that's, uh, 450 zip-up bags! These are my only two options, I'm sorry! Well, let's check out the reviews for this thing and see if it's worth the money. Grandbaby loves it! Five stars! Alright, maybe we shouldn't ask Grandma on her opinion. Five stars, five stars, five stars, five stars! Oh my god! Why does the Nintendo Switch Vita have so much love? There's more negative ratings on the Ziploc bags! Now, nothing about this console looks appealing in the slightest. So I guess we have to buy it. So, after weeks of waiting, it's finally here. And to the surprise of no one, it's a big honkin' piece of trash! There are multiple different models available, all ranging in different abilities and hardware. And I had to request that I get the newest and best one they were offering. As an example, that would be like showing off the original Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Nintendo 3DS in one ad. Not knowing that one is technically better than the other, while only advertising the specs and capabilities of the best model. Wow, yeah, that game console sounds really impressive. 
not knowing that there's a difference between the consoles. And when it arrives, you get socks. Because this console sucks. All right, you know what? Scrap that joke. It's not even funny. But this is a video game console. So how are the games? Well, this is one absolutely beautiful and well-designed menu. What do you think? Yeah. Once again, we're dealing with more 8 and 16-bit emulators. NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance games. None of these bootlegs do anything to stand out from one another. How many times does someone want to play a bunch of old Nintendo games with butchered quality? The games run fine, I guess. They sound like a Taco Bell toilet bowl, though. <laughs> Which, no, it's not a compliment. I'm tired of looking at these games. These bootleg consoles have kind of soured my love for 8 and 16-bit games, which is kind of sad to say. There are a few bootleg games on here, but it's nothing we already haven't talked about. I'm light years ahead of this console, which apparently now I'm being told is called X7. That's it. But wait a minute, the intro video clearly showed PlayStation games. So where are they? Well, as it turns out, what I received was an X7, but what I requested was an X12! So you know what I did? I bought another one. Yeah, this time, making sure I got the newest and up-to-date model. Now we gotta wait again. There's like a hundred PS1 and PS2 games combined on here, which isn't too bad. Let's check out, uh, Spyro the Dragon, an absolute PlayStation classic. Something don't seem right here. Hmm, yes, I see. My detective skills finally coming into place. And after playing this game for 15 seconds, I realized something. This is absolutely terrible! I guess this is why we never see anything past the Super Nintendo in these bootleg consoles. Why? One simple answer is all I'm looking for. Why? Who wants to play games like this? They all run so terribly slow. Uh, let's try another game. Um, Symphony of the Night. Yeah, that game's got some 16-bit vibes to it. Maybe it'll run better. <laughs> That's what I get for being optimistic. And no, don't worry, the PlayStation 2 games don't run any better. The funniest thing to me, however, is that out of the entire PlayStation 2 library of games that could have been on this, you know what game is labeled at number one? Family Guy. Holy crap! You know, normally when I buy bootlegs and bootleg consoles, I have to do it online. I go to some sketchy Russian website, give them my credit card information, and pray to Jeebus that it doesn't get stolen. And then I wait like three months for it to eventually show up. It's quite the process. But the other day, something magical happened. My friends took me to an antique store because I guess that's just what all the cool kids are doing these days. It was pretty neat. They had way more games than I was expecting, along with some cool memorabilia that took me right down memory lane. And then... There it was. I looked up and saw this! The PVP Station Lite 3000! So of course, I had to buy it. Because why should I start making good decisions now? At first glance, there's already a lot to take in here and try to process. Such as, what's up with this box art? Crash Bandicoot popping out of this not PSP giving me a thumbs up like, yeah man, this is gonna be a good time, trust me. And then there's Mario over the Crash logo. It's cursed, man. It really is. What exactly are you doing here, Mario? He doesn't appear anywhere else on this box. What do you want? Oh, you want a high five? Okay. The console itself is just a big hunk of plastic. It feels so cheap and hollow, like I could snap it in half with just the right amount of frustration. The buttons feel nice, though, so I'll give them that. That's the good stuff. And this is the cartridge that came with the console. 999,666 games in one. Why does this always happen to me? 
Now this console continues to suck because you can actually hook it up to the TV by using AV cables. Yeah, the cable you used on your Super Nintendo in 1991! Apart from that, I really couldn't find any information regarding this thing. Its country of origin, when it was released, why it was made, nothing. So we have almost a million games to cover. Obviously not gonna cover all of them. I mean, hey, there's probably not even almost a million games on this thing anyway. I'm calling its bluff now. Huh. So, uh, looks like there are. Man, the things I do for love. Where do we start? I have no idea, so I did what any sane person would do and went to Twitter. I put out this tweet that said, hey, Pick a number between 1 and 999,666, and you'll be in the next video. And then it got over 4,000 replies. Thank you, seriously, I'm flattered, but please stop! I'm a man of my word, so... Let's see your suggestions. A lot of you said game number one, so great! Kinda defeats the purpose, but if that's what you want, let's check out World Soccer. <laughs> It's an NES game. And it sure is soccer. You start out by picking your country. I picked Soviet Russia because I'm 99% sure that's where this console was birthed. Dude, it's a soccer game. Whatever, it's fine. Shouldn't be number one. Your first game should always be an attention grabber to set the mood. Not this. Alright, uh, ooh, Simple Flips! What a sweet man he is! Recommending game number 52! Whatever you say, buddy! Scoon! Never talk to me again. The game is an underwater shoot 'em up where you... shoot stuff. I did it. I don't know, man, does this look fun to you? According to Wikipedia, the story of this game is that aliens who rule the planet Neptune run out of food and are invading Earth to eat us all alive. That's metal. It's a shame that this can't convey that properly. Also, what kind of name is Squoon? I want to keep calling it Spoon. All right, uh, game number 999665, Stargate. It's bad. Billiam, request number 42! No, not happening. I guess this is a good time to mention that despite there being over 900,000 games, the variety is lacking, only having a grand total of about 8 games on here! Yes, you heard me correctly! There are only like 8 to maybe 10 different games on here, and they're repeated 900,000 times! Like, ooh, here's Pac-Man! Yeah, okay, it's NES Pac-Man. I'm having a fun time. Okay, I'm bored. Let's play, um... Ooh, Pac-Man! That sounds interesting! It's almost like I've played this before! And gee whiz! What is this game here? Pac-Man again! You get the point. So unfortunately, there's no real point in going through submissions on Twitter. I'm sorry. Because there's a good chance that if I did, I'd just be talking about Skwoon 400 more times! And I just don't think I'm strong enough to do that, I'm sorry. But hey, while we're here, we might as well check out the other games we could be playing over and over again. Uh... Yeah, I had to Google it. Ninja Hattori-kun. It's a side-scroller where you throw ninja stars. And it kinda sucks. Now scratch that, it really sucks! This game is so difficult! One hit and you die! Now some of the enemies, one hit and they die, that's great. But the others, no! They take like a million hits! And you just get swarmed with enemies so much! Like aren't I a ninja? Isn't it my job to hide and not be seen? I suck at being a ninja. There's a game called Harry Potter on here. That should be interesting. <laughs> Oh wait, it sounds like garbage! It's another boring shoot 'em up I swear I've already talked about at one point. Is Harry naked though? What's going on here? This game sucks. That's seriously it though. Nothing else on here is worth talking about since they're all just below average NES games. Like what am I supposed to say about pinball? Yup. That sure is that. I mean, this is like the most boring bootleg console ever! I gotta be missing something here! Wait, what's this? 
Important. Read the instruction and separate health and safety precaution booklets before setup or use of your system. What? This? What could this possibly say? Uh, wait, what's this? Do not disassemble or try to repair 8-bit. Do not store your 8-bit in a humid place. Do not drop, hit, or otherwise abuse 8-bit. Do not spill liquids. That was nice. We should do this more often. There was a time where the Nintendo Wii was the best-selling video game console of all time. It had everything! Accessible and easy games for the whole family to play, adorable characters, a remote control. I guess everyone loves dingling and dangling a remote, the sales prove it! And a fun and easy name to remember. Wii! So yeah, obviously it was gonna get knocked off and bootlegged to heck. Such as the game console in today's video, The Woo. Possibly a sequel to The Wah, and The Where, and The Why. I think I instantly hate this and everything it stands for. So there's not a lot of information I can find out there revolving The Woo. Probably because Nintendo would sue them into the next millennia, and don't think they won't. They've sued for a lot less. The only thing I can really find is that apparently this thing has multiple different names. One of which being the iTech MiWi. But don't worry, it's the same exact garbage as the Wii. Complete with a totally unique shape that doesn't resemble the Wii in any way. Hollow garbage remotes that look like they'll snap if you sneeze at them too hard. And a boatload of garbage games that if you played with your family, they'd probably throw you off a bridge. So, let's check out the Nintendo Wii. Now there's a lot, and I mean a lot of terrible games inside this bootleg monstrosity, so I'm gonna try my best to cover as much of them as I can. Also, because the quicker I can turn this thing off, the better. Let's talk about the sports games first, because those are the games that made the Wii a bajillion dollars. Boxing! You're, uh, beating the crap out of this kid. I'll admit, it's pretty funny knocking down this toddler with a haymaker. China man, they really do not like kids. Basketball! Yeah, I mean, that pretty much sums it up. Shooting a ball in this incredibly slow-moving basket. It's so slow, you'd think it'd almost be impossible to miss. But, this is a garbage wee knockoff. So nothing is possible. Give up hope now. Golf! Golf is never a fun time in any game or in real life, so by that standard, hey, this game isn't too bad. Soccer. Or foosball, by the looks of it. This ball flies around the field and you can only move your entire line of players up and down to kick it. You know, like foosball, which is 125% more entertaining than real soccer. Suck it, Europe! Archery has the player floating around and trying to hit a target. Now, a lot of these look really simple, but the Woo actually uses motion controls. Just really crappy ones. So every time you swing the controller, there's like a 5 second delay before the game realizes what you even did. Baseball! Now, baseball's always a fun time, right? Swinging the remote like a real baseball bat at a million miles an hour? Accidentally letting go of the remote and hitting your TV? Yeah, we all did that. Sorry, Mom. Visually speaking, the game's not too ugly. And that's about the only nice thing I can say about it. I think it's literally impossible for anyone to hit this stupid ball. And it's not even moving fast. The game just refuses to respond. Oh, but when you're the pitcher, of course the opponents can hit it out of the park. Every single time. I hate sports. Tennis! Another game that feels totally broken. Why can't I hit the ball? Even me, a lazy gamer in real life, can hit a tennis ball out of my hands. 
I do like the immersive first-person perspective, though. Come on, Nintendo, you slackers are being outdone by a bootleg. Bowling! Wow, that's only really annoying. It's bowling. A bowling game only needs two things to be successful in my eyes. Satisfying speed when you throw the ball, and good impact when it hits the pins. God damn it, I literally only ask for two things! I also want to take this moment to talk about the names of some of these games. Like, me fit. I love how instead of having two eyes in the made up word, they just totally misspell a word that actually exists instead. Geniuses. The last of the sports games is me Papacon. We start off by choosing our disgusting creature. Yeah, I said it, what are you gonna do? This is Guitar Hero. I'm pretty sure Guitar Hero could absolutely sue China if they wanted to with this. And yeah, I call this a sports game. Rocking is a full-on workout. I'll be honest, this is the last thing I expected to see in this Wii ripoff. And in case you're wondering, there aren't any actual songs on here that people would want to listen to. Like Stand Atlantic. So fuck you and fuck your pity boy. No, instead we get shit like the Can Can and whatever music is for free for anyone to use. What a rip. So those were all the family games that would entice you and your family to get a woo, and trick your grandma into buying it because both of these consoles have funny names. All in all, they were terrible, and the woo couldn't even lace up the Wii's boots. However, there's still a ton more games on here that are just boring, generic video games that nobody in the family would like. Unless you had like a pet demon or something. They might like these games. And since I love you guys so much, we'll check some of them out. But not all of them! I don't love anyone that much. This game is called 100 Floors. You play as this stupid idiot and need to descend this stairwell, landing on platforms and it's all very bad. The next game is just Space Invaders. I mean, even these bugs don't look interested. They have that look on their face that just screams, Ugh, just hurry up and kill me! Here's Pow Pow. What's Pow Pow exactly? It's an ostrich. I guess. The game is an auto-runner, a concept that Super Mario Run would steal almost 10 years later. Shame on you, Nintendo! The game is really slow and dumb. Alright, here's West Cowboy with Link. Is that Link? Or is that Ben Drowned? This can go either way. In this game, you need to shoot your opponent in the face. Fun for the whole family, really. Your cowboy can swivel his body all around like he's in the Matrix. You'll need to avoid the enemy bullets and line up your shots so you can take them out. Honestly, not too bad. On this console in particular, the game stands out and actually feels kinda... fun? Alright, hey, you ever play Tapper? The arcade game where you need to throw beer at potential alcoholics? Well, it's here! Although I feel much sadder here, because good god, what's got you down? Should I be serving you this alcohol? And what deviant art hell did you crawl out of? Honestly, so many of these games are just so boring and bland. I don't have much I can say about them. They're simple arcade games that were remade with some deviant art for some reason. You got your puzzle games, racing games, even more puzzle games. I don't want this! I wish I could email the company who made this bootleg monster so I could see how many sales they have. Maybe in China this thing sold pretty good, but I gotta remind myself that this console came out in the late 2000s to compete with the Wii. Or, you know, compete. If this thing came out in the 90s, then maybe I could see it being somewhat interesting. But as it stands now, the Woo isn't wooing anyone over anytime soon. And that was yet another adventure into the bootleg universe. Can't be too surprised if there was a Wii ripoff, but I can be surprised at the fact I thought maybe it was gonna be okay. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go and play my Wii as an apology. The Game Boy was Nintendo's first handheld console to see real success. Released in 1989, the Game Boy would change how we would play games. With this nifty new device, we could play our favorite games like Mario and Kirby, but now, on the go! I absolutely love my Game Boy and still treasure it today, which is why it absolutely warms my heart that no one has ever attempted to duplicate its success in a bootlegged- God. Dang it! Why do I even try? This is the My Arcade Go Gamer Portable Handheld Gaming System. That's, uh... That's really the best you came up with, huh? Why not Game Girl? Why not Gamer Boy? Why not anything else apart from what you chose? I don't want to recite a novel when I'm talking about the console. 
So, my little wafflings, strap in, because today, we're gonna check out the worst Game Boy bootleg ripoff console. So, the My Arcade Go Gamer Portable handheld gaming system was made by... My Arcade, a company that, to their credit, have actually made some charming little mini arcade cabinets, cute little novelty souvenirs that you can actually play, and decorates a home nicely. But then they do this! Like, why you gotta do that to me? As mentioned earlier, the Go Gamer Portable is clearly meant to replicate the Game Boy, complete with a D-pad, start, select, and two whole buttons! Now, what makes this thing really stand out is the fact that it has 220 games built into it. You've got to be kidding me! Am I really supposed to go through all of these games? I mean, it's got a little mix of everything. Adventure, puzzle, strategy, racing, and sports. Ultra portable! As opposed to just regular portability. Which was fine, it, it doesn't have to be ultra. The ratings for this thing are also mainly pretty positive. Huh. So, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just the big old stupid idiot. Only one way to find out. Let's play the My Arcade Go Portable Gamer. Whatever it's called. So we start this thing up and we're given a lot of options. None of which really seem appealing. I guess let's jump headfirst into this and see how long we could last until I go completely insane or just pass out. First up is curling. What is this, like some Canadian sport? I've seen it here and there, and I don't get it. You throw this UFO down an ice skating rink and then need to sweep the floor to keep it going? This is a sport? What's wrong with you, Canada? You had it right with poutine and then you give us this? The game is fine, I guess, since it's just sweeping simulator. Alright, next. Memory. This is that one mini game from Super Mario Bros. 3. Complete with Nightmare Face. Educational. This game is called Catch Your Eggs. You take control of a weasel and need to collect falling eggs from hens. What? What's the connection with eggs and weasels? Whatever, the game's easy and control's fine enough. Cups changing. A poker chip gets thrown under these not cups and get shuffled around and you need to find which chalice the chip is under. Did I mention this is a console for kids? Because if so, why the casino setting? Is it so kids don't feel embarrassed that they're playing a kid's game? Next! Follow me. Set me free. Trust me and we will escape- HOLY CRAP THERE'S AN ANGEL! Now I'll give it to this game, it's actually pretty cool. Apart from bad cosplay Toad over here, I mean seriously, that's what that looks like. This angel travels on a set path and you have to follow it exactly. The map is set up like a grid, so you really gotta use your memorization powers to get through this one. It's pretty easy at first, but then the game starts introducing enemies and obstacles, and my stupid forgetful self just loses track. Yes, this children's game is smarter than me. Up next is a game that I swear the creators had to be on some kind of drugs to make. You play as a wolf with a lit fuse tied to it, and you have to light these green tiles on fire without lighting yourself on fire. I guess this classifies as an educational puzzle game, but it also classifies as WHAT?! Make the pain stop! This game is also hard as hell. You really have to think two steps ahead so you don't burn yourself alive. That's two games so far that are too hard for me. Here's fishing with super glitchy water. I mean, you fish and- JESUS CHRIST, WHAT ARE YOU, SOME KIND OF ANIMAL?! Oh. Yeah, this game's kinda messed up. The hippo has a devious look on its face, and the fish is down here all sad and scared. Like, please don't eat me, sir, I have a family. He dead now. This game is called Open Gold Box. You pick a Flintstones kid and select boxes. Literally, that's it. There's no strategy or anything. It's stupid! How is this educational? How is this a game? How is this supposed to be fun? I don't even- What's up today? What's up All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take breaks in between me losing my mind to recommend you actual Game Boy games that are actually good. Mario Land 2. That's a fun one. Okay, enough of that. Back to this thing. Next up is Gas Station. It's a gas station game. Cars pull up and you need to drag them to a pump and fill them up. 
Literally, that's it. What is this? How is this a game? It feels like you're filling up gas in real life because you don't actually do anything. You just stand there waiting for the machine to finish filling up your car. And why does this place only have one freaking pump? That's not optimal. You'd think these people waiting in line would realize that there's only one pump and would go somewhere else. Why am I so passionate about this? Up next is Forest Adventure. Oh my actual gosh. What legit nightmare has been brought upon me? Like, any character design would have been better than this. And they got pumpkin monsters! I don't know what kind of forest adventure this is, but it's one that I want no part of. At least this one's like, you know, an attempt at a game. 2D side-scrolling crap that's trying its best to mimic Mario with its- WHAT THE HECK EXCUSE YOU?! NO! 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 YOU DON'T JUST THROW A GIANT GREMLIN CREATURE AT ME LIKE THAT WITH NO WARNING! And it's gone now. Great. I prefer that. This game's fine, I guess. At least it resembles a game and not just a bootlegged Mario Party minigame. And it's back. I've had enough of you, to be honest. Next game is Water Rescue. Here, this boat is... <laughs> oh my gosh! This boat is on fire! And you take control of these three rafts and need to save people from jumping out of the boat! What kind of concept is this for a kid's game? You can easily miss the people jumping because the controls are shockingly bad for something like this. And they just drown. And you need to pretend like it never happened. The last thing I expected to see today was Titanic 2. No, thank you. Ugh. Oh, uh, Kid Dracula. That's fun too. I wish I were playing that instead of this. This game is called Hero Boy, and oh my gosh, again! What am I witnessing? More people potentially meeting their fiery demise. You take control of Hero Boy, who looks like every six-year-old's drawing of themselves as a superhero, saving children from burning buildings. Oh, that, uh, apparently aliens caused. Whatever. Man, why are there so many unattended babies in these burning buildings? This is a console meant for kids, right? Ice cream! We got an overly enthusiastic chibi girl who's a baker and... Huh. Well, I don't really think that's okay. I definitely feel uncomfortable. That yellow dollar sign down there is very telling. Bubble Ghost is fun! Have we looked at 200 games yet? No? Not even close? All right. Lightning round! Cue the Mario Party music! Dodgeball! If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Unless that ball is thrown by gross blue alien monsters. Then again, I don't blame them. I'd want to hit these things too. Cute animal volleyball! I guess cute is subjective if you like wide-eyed, never-blinking chibi animals playing sports. Then this is for you. And definitely not for me. Uh... Rhino zombie chase flags. Next! Oh baby, now we're talking sumo wrestling! Yeah! Take that and that and that! Oh my gosh, he did a leg sweep? I don't think those are the rules of sumo. This is some tank shooting game. It's pretty slow, but I like it. You gotta get your tank's trajectory correct so your bomb flies and hits the opponent. This is pretty educational. Good for you! Pig golf! This is some weird platforming golf game, but with that as the main character. Now, I know that probably sounds rude, but come on, you ugly creature! I'm losing my mind, man. Horse races that move as fast as anime characters. Cheap mobile game knockoffs. Car racing games that feel slower than the horses while also giving me a seizure, thanks for that. Blowing up dogs! And... I don't even know what's going on. It's like, realistic goat simulator. That's probably a ram, though. I can't take this anymore, I'm sorry, but I hope you can see what we're dealing with! So many games ranging anywhere from mediocre to just downright awful. The games that claimed to be educational were way too easy, even for a kid and were so boring that it wouldn't keep their attention. Everything else that wasn't boring was way too dark! I noticed the theme of fire that would consistently come up in a lot of games. 
Are you okay? There's something you want to talk about? Despite how many games on this console involved fire, this thing was absolutely not lit. Boo! You stink! So, this is the Lexi book, and yep, definitely getting some Wii vibes here. You get two remotes with plastic buttons so thick, I guarantee they hardly respond, and it's a chore to just press them down. Now this thing sounds really special, I mean it's 200 games in one that are all in beautiful 32-bit. We got sports games, arcade games, racing games, f fun games. <laughs> are you implying that not all of these games are fun? Cause I'd believe you. Now unlike a lot of these awful bootleg consoles that come in from all around the world, the Lexi book comes from my own backyard, aka America. Obviously. I mean it has to, right? All of the promotional images use the same white family stock image. Like the hot mom over here hardly looks invested, while the dad looks a little too into this thing. Oh my gosh, this image can tell a story. The mom looks like she wants to speak to my manager. This kid's name is probably something stupid like Braxton. This girl probably has two names like Alexis May. Spelt funny, of course. And this guy looks like he's not allowed to be within 10 feet of a school. Well, that's about everything involving the promotional side of the console. I guess we now have to look at some games. What a ripoff. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I plugged in the Lexi book, not a personal computer from 1994! Man, this is not a pleasing menu. Who needs a stupid home screen with organized and pleasing apps when you got folders? So we're probably not gonna go through all of these games, but I'm gonna try my best. Bomb Superman! Alright, I've already had enough! Bomb Superman, why would I do that? And what the heck are you pointing at? Yes, I, I do see this game. I just can't believe it. Huh. So it's Bomberman. Super slow and laggy Bomberman. Seriously, why does this game run like garbage? There's nothing going on! And if this is what 32-bit looks like, I'm glad we live in a world where it didn't become popular. This is a bootleg. When you think of the word bootleg video games, this is what comes to mind. Ugly 3D models trying their best to rip off a more successful product. Up next is Audacity Snakes. You talking about Audacity or the city? That's a JonTron joke. I literally ripped off a JonTron joke. Just like this game literally ripped off another bootleg from another bootleg console. It's Snake. You don't have to pay money if you want to play this game. Just open up the YouTube player when you have no internet and BAM! Remember that? I don't even know if you can do that anymore, to be honest. Okay, let's move on before I get more upsetty spaghetti. Sword of Warrior! I mean, why not? <laughs> Holy crap, that's epic! This one's gotta be good! I mean, it's got fire and swords! I hate everything! Okay, so what we have here is a super well-designed and well-controlling game. If you've never played a video game before, got him! It's an attempt at an arcade-style beat-em-up. Emphasis on the word attempt. This is our main hero, the aptly named Sword of Warrior. I mean, to be fair, I've played worse arcade beat-em-ups. There was a Golden Axe remake on the PlayStation 2 that looked pretty similar to this game, and that was made by an actual company that supposedly cared about the game. So, I actually shouldn't be too harsh on this game. Okay, scratch that. I'm having a terrible time. Next, please! Alright, this is, uh... Oh my gosh, never look at me again. <laughs> okay, so here's Ninja Hero. Dude, come on. Like, are we even trying anymore? It's like a worse version of Sword of Warrior, which is saying a lot! More ugly characters, unresponsive controls, and stiff gameplay. This guy's a pretty terrible ninja, I gotta say. But as a ninja, he's doing pretty good. I'd give him a gold star. And I'll give myself a ninja star to the back of my head so I can guarantee I never have to play this awful game again! 
Now these games are great and all. Th no, no, they're not. But this is a Wii ripoff, so I want to play some games with motion controls. Here we go. Paint. Literally MS Paints from Windows XP. I'm not kidding. It's even got the red X in the corner like a computer application. Now drawing with motion controls isn't exactly functional. However, it is pretty entertaining. This game doesn't do that though and makes you draw with the D-pad. Thanks Lexibook. Alright, now we're talking some sports. A real manly man sport like ping pong at 3 frames per second. Also, this wasn't even a game, it's a movie! Why? Did they accidentally leave this in here? What a nice little easter egg. If that easter egg was 8 months old and rotting away. Oh, now here's the goods! Motion control sports games, like tennis! This one's pretty weird, and I'm not even sure if it's in a good way. It's a first person tennis game, which does feel more virtual and interactive, but you can't see your tennis racket, meaning you're not 100% sure on when to swing. So when the ball comes in your general vicinity, 9 times out of 10 you just flail your arms like crazy! Also, holy crap, I'm hitting this ball at 100 miles an hour? Sure doesn't feel like it. Snowball! Featuring even more horrifying creatures! Seriously, at least try to look like you're having fun, come on, man. Oh hey, look at this! A tutorial! Why start giving one now? Swing the controller to control the actor. Actor? You know most video games use the word character. You think you're better than Mario calling yourself an actor? It's what you think it is. You throw snowballs, and it's impossible to hit your opponent because this is a hardly responsive Wiimote. Okay, so here's a game that actually uses the motion controls really well. Little Ninja, which is spelt correctly this time. Still wish we could do something about that face though. It's a first-person action game, where ninjas and other non-threatening uglies advance toward you, and it's your job to fight them off. How do we do that? By swinging the remote like a madman. Seriously, there is no strategy whatsoever to it. Go crazy! You can even do some Naruto Jutsu stuff and burn everyone alive! Here we got a game with cl cl clowns the only clown I see here is me, for spending actual money on this console. Ah! Must be the circus. Here's Candy Bear. Candy Bear? Meet YouTube. YouTube? This is Candy Bear. It's uh... It's a 2D side-scroller that literally rips off Mario 1. Seriously, this is World 1-1. The block setup, the pipes. This is a Mario ripoff in the purest sense of the word. Even, even the title screen music sounds a teensy tiny bit familiar. Yeah, it goes dun 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 dun. So we complete level one by jumping down a flagpole. Hmm, seems kind of familiar. Level two is uh, well, what do you think? It's level two for Mario. The dark underground setting with the exact same layout! I can't believe what I'm looking at! And what are these Goombas supposed to be? They look like Lovecraftian horrors of the night. I mean, congratulations, seriously. Never have I ever encountered a more awful Mario ripoff! I mean, could you honestly be any more shameless with your ripoffs? Plumber. Just plumber. What more do you need? And who are you? Anime Mario is in like the top seven things this planet never needed. It literally looks like they just took the actual Mario artwork and just threw on a white haired anime boy. This is so surreal. I, so, I still just can't believe I'm actually looking at anime Mario. A bootleg Nintendo character on a bootleg Nintendo console. How fitting. The game itself is also just the bootleg Super Mario Bros from the arcade. And Anime Mario is no longer Anime Mario. What a scam. So like, you get the idea, don't you? So many ugly and unappealing games. 32-bit isn't exactly the best, or at least it wasn't utilized properly here. 
all of the games are either shameless knockoffs of actual games, or are simply... NIGHTMARE FUEL! With its ugly visuals and unresponsive controls. Overall, I think it's safe to say that the LexiBook was a failure. Nowadays, Wiis are so cheap that if you are still buying a LexiBook over a Wii, then you are clearly a chaotic evil type of person. But, I will say something nice about the LexiBook. It's better than the PlayStation Move. Or, as your white family would say, that really butters my biscuits!